Hi, I'm Katie from barn media and today I'm going to show you how to create a WordPress document library just like this one. It's quite easy to do and you don't need any coding experience and we're going to do it using WordPress plugins and I'll tell you where to get them. So it's going to work like this. Your downloads and your documents will each be listed in a table layout just like this one with each one on a separate row of the table. Now this is a great way to display loads and loads of documents, even hundreds or thousands of documents uh, within a table layout on your website on the front end of a WordPress site and it makes it really quick and easy for your users to find the documents they're looking for. There's multiple ways to find information. So for example, you can click on column headers to search by any column. You can use the filters to find specific documents based on categories or tags or anything like that. And you can also use the search box to quickly find specific documents. If you've got categories or tags listed within your table, then you can click on those as well. And you can also choose which columns of information you want to display about your documents. And later in this tutorial, I'll also tell you some extra tips about how to add even more columns uh, for, of anything you like, which we will do using custom fields and taxonomies. And I'll show you how to use all the columns that come built into the plugins as well. Now, finally, you can also show links within your document library table. So you can have a link to a single document page if you need a separate page on your website for each document. But what most people do is disable these links and I'll show you how to do that. And instead, just have a link to download the document within uh, to your computer. So you can either have a link or a button and you just click on it and that downloads the document directly from the document library page to the user's computer. Now, to do this, we're going to use two WordPress plugins. The first one is going to allow us to add the documents and the downloadable files in the back end of WordPress. And to do that, we're going to use a plugin called WordPress Download Manager, which is a free plugin available on wordpress.org. And this free plugin is creates a download post type in your WordPress admin, which is basically a dedicated area for you to add your documents, the downloadable file and all the information about them. And the second plugin we're going to use will take the downloads that you add using the WordPress download plugin and it will display them in the table layout on the front end of your website. So this plugin is Post Table Pro, which is one of the plugins here by ourselves at Bantu Media. Then Post Table Pro, as I said, takes the downloadable files from the other plugin and it displays them in this neat table layout, which is what you need to actually turn what you've added in the back end into a front end document library with the download links that you need. Now let's get started. On my test site here, I've got two plugins installed, the ones I told you about. So we've got the free download manager plugin and we've got Post Table Pro. So those are the two active plugins. First, I'm going to show you how to add your documents with the Download Manager plugin. And then after we've added some documents, we will display them in the table layout using Post Table Pro. To add your downloads, you find the download section, which the free plugin has added to the WordPress admin. So you see this downloads link on the left. I'm gonna click on that and show you that I've already added four documents uh, to my document library. I'm now going to add a fifth document so that you can see what I did and uh, do that for your own website. So we go to downloads, add new. And the first thing we do is add a title. So let's say it's a maternity policy. If, let's pretend we're HR rep creating a document library of staff policies. Well, of course, there's lots of ways you could use it. Now you can see here that there's lots of different fields that have been created by the WordPress Download Manager plugin. And I'm gonna show you how to use those and display them in a table. Now the way I'm doing it isn't necessarily the only way. So if you think that the way I've used a particular column isn't the best way, then fine, you can do it differently. Um, so what I'm trying to show you is how to use these fields and display them in this table layout. But you can use different fields for different purposes as you choose. 
And if you find that there are any fields missing um, from here that you would like to display in your document library, then that's fine too. What you need to do then to add the extra fields is to use a plugin such as Advanced Custom Fields to add those extra fields. And that allows you to add any type of field that you want to add more information, more columns to your document library. So let's say you wanted a um, column for the date it was last modified. This date column shows the publication date when the document was added to the WordPress website. But if you wanted to add a date modified, you could create a custom field using the free advanced custom fields plugin and you could add that there. And that would add basically a different field to the add new file page here. And if you wanted to create other types of field that you would use to filter, so we saw here that we've got filters, then you could create a, a custom taxonomy. And to create a custom taxonomy, I recommend the free custom post type UI plugin, which is really easy to use. And that lets you create a taxonomy, which would basically act as another filter drop down here. So let's say if you created a year taxonomy to show documents from a particular year, then you would do that using a, a custom post type UI and it would add a year section to the right hand side here where you could tag the post with the year and then you could add a year drop down here in your document library. So use custom fields for storing one off data and custom taxonomies for sort for filterable data that you want to use to group your documents and find by that. Uh, however, I hope that the fields that come with the WordPress download plugin ma uh, manager plugin will be enough for you. So only use custom fields and taxonomies if the built in fields are not what you need. Then the next thing we're going to do is attach a file. So this is the downloadable file. We've already added the title, so we're going to add a file. So I'm going to open up my um, computer file system and I've created a pretend PDF called my PDF. So I'm just going to drag it in there and you can see it's added it. So that's all you need to do to add the file. I'm now going to publish my document because I know I haven't finished adding it all the information yet, but I need some information in order to carry on. So when you publish it, it basically adds the post to the WordPress database um, so that the download is actually stored properly in the database and has its own unique ID. Now we need this ID to link to the document and I'm going to use this content section here to add my download link. To do that, I'm going to add a link. So let's just write download and then we highlight it and click link. I'm sure you've done this before. It's just the standard way of adding a link in WordPress. So the next thing we need to do is type the link of the document. So to do that, you first of all, you just type your own website. So replace this with your own domain name. And then afterwards, we need to write forward slash, see there, then question mark WPDML. That stands for WordPress Download Manager, which is the plugin we're using. And then another forward slash and then equals and this is where you need to write the ID. So let's just save our link for now and to find the ID for your document um, what you need to do is look in the address bar at the top of your browser. So I'm going to go up to mine and I know you can't see my address bar because um, I've cropped out that bit but I'm copying a number from that address which is at the top of my browser. So if I go to edit my link now at the end of it, I'm going to write the number that I just copied from the browser address bar, which is 12424 in my case. So that is the link, uh, the ID in the, from the database of my document. You need to find the database ID for your own document and link to it. So the link should be, it should be uh, your normal website domain name, forward slash question mark, WPDML slash, equals and then the ID. And that is the link to download your document. At the moment, this is just a plain text link. So the word download will appear in the document library and people can click on it. If your theme comes with styling for other types of links, such as icons or buttons or something, then you can add that. 
So for example, I know that my theme has a CSS class, um, which is class equals button, and that, that will turn that link into a button. Your theme might have the same. I'm using the free storefront theme from WooCommerce. And so have a look at the way to add a button in your theme and you can use that. Or you can just add it as a plain text link as I did before. Now let's add a bit more information about the document to help people find it within the document library. The excerpt's quite nice and you can use the excerpt to describe the document in any way you want. So this is the staff maternity policy. Write whatever you want there. And that will be searchable within the table as well. Now let's add some tags. So I'm gonna choose from the most used tags. Um, not much relevant there, so let's call it maternity. And I'm also gonna tick from a category, policies. Um, you might remember in my document library, I had two ways of filtering by categories and tags. So um, you just choose whatever you want to use for filters. You don't have to use all of these different elements. I'm also going to add a featured image. I know documents aren't that visual, but sometimes I like to add an image to show the file type or something like that. Now I've previously uploaded some file type images to my media library. So I've simply browsed for an image and it's a PDF. So I'm gonna choose the PDF. And if we go back to the table, you can see it's just a nice way of showing what format is a bit more user friendly than writing PDF or something in a file format column. Um, finally, you'll see some more settings here, which are provided by the WordPress Download Manager plugin. Now, most of these aren't really applicable when you're displaying your documents in Post Table Pro. So I would generally recommend that you ignore them, um, but um, you might want to sort of test some of them, but most of them won't display in the table and you should use the other field types that I talked about it to actually display within your document library. And that's it for adding our documents. So let's click update. So if we go to our list of downloads now, we will see that we now have five. We've got the four I added before, plus the new maternity plugin, uh, the new, sorry, maternity policy that we just added. The next step is to convert this from these boring links in the back end of our website to a fully functional table in the front end which anybody can use to find the documents. To do that, we use the Post Table Pro plugin, which I showed you earlier. Once you've installed Post Table Pro, go to settings and then the Post Table Pro link here. And we go through the settings, you activate your license key, and first you choose a post type. By default, the plugin lists your blog posts, and that is not where you've added your documents, as you know. So instead, Choose the post type WPDM Pro, and that is the WordPress Download Manager plugins post type, which is your downloads here. So that's what you want to list in the document library table. Moving down, we're going to the table content section. Now, you probably want to click on this link to look at all the, no, this link actually, to look at all the available columns that you can include in your document library but I'm gonna give you some that work with the Download Manager plugin and you'll probably want to use, but feel free to swap them around or miss out any that you don't want. So I'm going to add an image, but I don't want the image column to be called image. Uh, I noticed a minute ago that that says image there. Well, I'm using that to show the file type, aren't I? So it would be more user friendly if this said file type. So let's do that. So to change the name of a column, you just write a colon after it and you write file type or whatever you want to call it. And then you do a comma to separate it from the next column. The second column is title, and I'm happy with the title of that. You could change it to document title if you wanted. Uh, next, I want content. Content is where I added the link to my document. So that third column is going to be the link, but I don't want it to say content. That's a bit weird because it's actually a link. So let's call it download. So we do colon download, then a comma for the next column. The next one I'm going to show is the category column added by the WordPress Download Manager plugin. And to, to display a, a category, you need to write tax. 
And that's basically because categories in a custom post type in WordPress, like this one here, downloads categories, is actually in WordPress, it's a taxonomy. That's just how WordPress works. So to tell Post Table Pro it's taxonomy, we write tax colon, and then we write the name of it, which is WPDM category. And then fine, let's have two more columns. We want excerpt and we want date, which is the date on which I added the download to my WordPress website. And of course you can change the date in WordPress um, manually if you want. Um, so if you want to use it as the document modified date or something, you could actually just artificially change the date and that would work. Um, so that's all the columns that we want. And let's scroll down and I'll just show you the features which are relevant to your document library. We want to tick the short codes box because that tells Post Table Pro to display short codes, HTML and other formatting inside the table content. And the reason we need that is because that will tell the plugin to display the document link so that you can download the document. If you don't tick that, then the link will display as plain text, which is no use at all. So we will tick that. You can choose the length of the uh, content and the excerpt. And with links, if you're planning to use the single download page, then you can just leave it um, as the default, which will allow people to click on a link of the title of the document to view a separate page. But uh, normally they don't look that good and they're not that relevant. So I would generally suggest for a document library to change links to none. And that will disable the links to the single document page and instead the only link will be the download link which you have already added to the content area. Let's keep going. You'll use lazy load if you have lots and lots and lots of documents like over 100 or something like that. So if you're having any performance problems with your document library then just try using lazy load and also caching and they're good ways of speeding it up. You can choose how many, the number of posts per page which is how many documents will appear on each page before pagination links will appear at the bottom. You can choose how it's sorted, you can show and hide things like the search box. But the only other thing we're going to talk about here is the filters. So the filters are the drop downs above the table and I'm going to choose custom because I want to choose to have filters for category and also the tags, because you might remember I added categories and tags. So to do that, the first filter, we're gonna do tax colon WPDM category. That's the same as we've got as a column in the table, you might remember. And let's add tags. We didn't actually add a tags column to the table because I thought it might be a bit messy, but you can still add tags as filters if you want to. And I mentioned earlier that if you wanted to be able to sort by any other stuff and filter by other stuff, you could also create custom taxonomies. And if you had done that, then that's where you add the filters. So if you had a custom taxonomy, you'd write tax colon my custom taxonomy. Obviously you wouldn't have called it that, but this should be whatever the slug is for your custom taxonomy, if you have created one. But hopefully you don't need one and can just use these fields and that's it, we're gonna click save. Now the next thing we're going to do is to actually create the page with our document library. So let's go to pages, add new. And we'll call it my document library. And then we go to the main content area for the page and you'll see here on the second row of icons that there's an insert post table link. If you can't see it, it's because toolbar, toolbar toggle needs clicking. So you see how that one shows and hides the second row. So you click that and it adds a post table shortcode. And this shortcode will create a table with all the settings that you chose a minute ago. So all the columns that you chose, the filters and all of that. If you want to add multiple tables to different parts of your website, for example, different tables showing documents from different categories, then you can do that by adding different parameters to the short code. So you might do something like that. Uh, but for this, for this tutorial, we're just gonna show all of our downloads in a single table. I'm gonna choose the full width template 
uh, because usually with a table layout, there's going to be more space if you don't have a sidebar. And my theme storefront has a full width template, so your theme might as well. I'm going to publish my document library page. And now for the fun part, we're going to go to view page. And here we have our finished document library. We have the filters that we added. We have our five documents listed within the table with different types of download link. And here you can see the maternity policy document which you saw me add earlier. So to do everything in this tutorial, you need the WordPress Download Manager plugin and the Post Table Pro plugin. Use the two plugins together, exactly how I have described, to create your own document library which looks just like this. Thanks for watching.